Hey guys, Skellington80 here. So we are back for day 11 of 25 Days of Monsters. If you're returning to watch this series, and you have for the past 10 days, thank you for coming back. I probably should have thanked you for coming back ages ago, but... Well, I'm thanking you now. And so, well, today we have the story of Grendel. This ugly fella. From... Beowulf, written around, which was written around the 8th century. And because apparently people, it was not a common practice for people to sign their works, there is no author listed. Category is giant. Base of operations is the swamps of Denmark. When is the Middle Ages? Powers, his powers are being immune to weapons. Most dastardly deed is just non-stop eating people. And the fear factor is four, even though that's relative from person to person. All right. Grendel had a lot of problems. He was descended from Cain, history's first murderer, which, as you probably know, happened in Genesis in the Bible. I'm curious to know as to how that happened. I mean, how does a man-eating giant come from... How does that even work? Who, who, who had the bright idea to... S procreate with a giant who thought that would be a good idea why i have so many questions but we are going to ignore all those questions and the freaky implications and keep going okay he was brother to evil things such as giants and elves and monsters of the deep and disliked loud noises well i can kind of get behind that Especially since my dogs pretty much go nuts in the background of every video, which, again, I am very sorry for. But you will have to get used to it because they bark a lot, as I have stated. Okay. And he lives with his mother in the water in a swamp. So I guess we can add the ability to breathe underwater to his powers. When Hrothgar, the king of Denmark, built a great call called Herot... Grendel would often pass nearby, and daily he heard loud joy in the hall. People were laughing and feasting, and there was the sound of harping and the clear song of the bard. All the loud noises made Grendel furious. So instead of going up to them and asking for them to keep the noise down like a normal person, because he's a giant and can do whatever he wants, at night, when everyone was sleeping, he snuck into Herot, ate 30 Danes, and then ran home to the moors among the misty hill slopes. And the next night, he came back for more. Yeah, it probably didn't even cross his mind to just calmly ask him to stop. I mean, he doesn't even technically have to. He can just do whatever he wants, like I said. Okay, now the Danes were Vikings and valiant warriors and hardly people to sit around and passively get eaten. Drunken with beer, and the warriors often boasted o'er the table over the Yale Cup that they would bide in the beer hall, the Battle of Grendel with the Terror of Swords. Uh, basically, I think that means they wanted to kill him. But what the Danes did not know that Grendel was that Grendel's skin was invulnerable against all victorious weapons and swords. When they tried to fight Grendel, their weapons bounced off the beast harmlessly, and soon the mead hall was all bloodstained and the benches were wet with gore. Grendel had done his work once again. Herot was a beautiful hall, the best of all houses, but anyone who tried to live in it died. For years the Danes lived in fear, and for twelve years Grendel ruled and strove against right, he alone against all of them. A Dane for breakfast, a Dane for supper, a Dane for a midnight snack. Grendel was having a good time. And then a man named Beowulf showed up to ruin his fun. Beowulf was the strongest of all men in strength. He had made a name for himself by purging the North Sea of monsters, and now he had come to Denmark to save Herot from Grendel. Don't worry, I got this, said Beowulf. Actually, what he said was, and now I alone shall settle the affair of Grendel. That night, Beowulf and his men lay down in Herot and pretended to sleep. Soon Grendel came and, in his fury, tore the hall door off its hinges. Before anyone could stop him, he grabbed a man and tore him to pieces all unawares. And he bit at the flesh and drank the streaming blood and devoured huge pieces of flesh. 
Then the beast turned to Beowulf. Now Beowulf knew that weapons just bounced off Grendel, so he vowed he would forego to carry the bat to the battle a sword. Basically, uh, he was going to wrestle him. As Grendel approached, Beowulf grabbed the monster's arms, and Grendel, having never met in all the quarters of the earth amongst other men a greater hand grip, the two strove for a moment, and Beowulf squeezed hard. Grendel felt his fingers burst and tried to pull away, but Beowulf would not let go of his arm. Grendel pulled harder, and a gaping wound was seen on his shoulder. His sinews sprang open, and his bone lockers burst. The right arm was torn off. His arm was torn right off, but he was free. With Beowulf still holding his arm, Grendel fled Hera and returned to his underwater lair. Natch Naturally, he told his mother what had happened, and then he laid down and died, and Hell received him. Naturally, Grendel's mother wanted revenge. She came back to Hera and started killing people just like her son. Beowulf had to pursue her back to her swamp, where he finally f slew her and freed Hera from her terror. Years later, in an unrelated accident, Beowulf was killed by a dragon. Alright, so I am sorry if anyone was disturbed by that story. Just, you're gonna have to get used to it because a lot of these stories do not have kid-friendly content, as I warned you on the first day, and, well, uh, also, well, if you actually liked that story, whatever floats your boat, dude. Okay, beyond the book, Battle Sweat. Beowulf weeded a sore wielded a sword called Hrunting, one of the ancient treasures, and its edge was made of iron and poison-tipped and hardened in battle sweat. It sounds pretty cool, but how could a sword be hardened in battle sweat? What is battle sweat, anyway? Battle sweat is a kind of metaphor called a kenning, a paraphrase that describes a common object in a roundabout poetic way. Battle sweat is blood, so Hrunting was tempered by plunging it in blood. Some kennings in Beowulf are straightforward. Helmet bearer would be a warrior, for instance, but others get more fanciful. The sea is the whale road, and when Beowulf gives a speech, he unlocks his word hoard. The main name Beowulf is, a, is itself a kenning. It means bee wolf, or a beast that preys on bees like a wolf. Beowulf is named after a bear. An example of a modern kenning would be skyscraper. Alright. Uh... Time to, there's some riddles here, old English riddles. Be sure to think hard about this. I will give you some time to think, and feel free to pause the video. I promise that neither of these are very easy to get first try, because they're a little weird. If you cut me, you are the one who cries. What am I? This one should be fairly easy. Alright, you ready? The answer is an onion. It makes it makes sense. I mean the the chemicals start flowing into the air and make you cry and I don't know why I'm explaining this, but this one is slightly more difficult. I have one eye, two ears, and a hundred heads. What am I? I promise that this will completely subvert your expectations, and it is not all what you expected. If you are thinking a hydra with one eye, then you will be surprised. Have you thought about it? The answer is a one-eyed onion salesman. See? Told you these riddles were difficult. Well, maybe the second one, but yeah. There are lots of other wrinkles and riddles in Old English, but these are the only ones that are about onions. Old English. Old English was the language spoken in England before the year 1066, when French speakers came in and changed everything. In Old English, nouns have genders, like in French or Spanish, and they also have multiple cases, as in Latin. Even the alphabet is different. Old English has extra letters such as, uh... Oh, fudge. 
Sorry, sorry, sorry. But, darn it, I am so sorry. This is very unprofessional. Such as this guy and this guy, which both make a sound. Like a TH sound. Old po English poetry like Beowulf doesn't rhyme. Instead, the poems use alliteration, which is when the starting sounds of syllables are the same, like that. Each line of an old English poem is divided into two halves, and one or more words from the first half of a line must alliterate with the same sound as one of the words in the second half of a line. This is the opening of Cadmon's hymn. The oldest poem in English. And one of the most exa famous examples of old English poetry. The poems came to an illiterate English cowherd in a dream. Uh, I am not going to read that because I am going to butcher it. But it translates to, Now we shall praise heaven's warden, the creator's might, and his purpose. Here you can... Read it if you want, but I am not going to read that. You done? Okay. The alliteration doesn't quite make it into the translation. Well, no, sh no crap. Although Old English looks weird, there are plenty of common English words. Finger, gold, storm, stream, dead, that are spelled the same as they were now, or a th same now as they were a thousand years ago. Others are very close, like water, which is spelled with a weird fused A and E, or board. The most common English words tend to come from Old English, and you can often spot a familiar word hiding inside a strange Old English word. A trio is a tree. A season is a chicken, and a hyphen is a raven. I probably horribly butchered that, but here you can see the proper spellings of the words. I'm just going to hold that still for a minute. We're almost at the end of this, don't worry. Alright. Cinewolf. Most Old English poems, including Beowulf, are anonymous. There was no tradition at the time of writing by so-and-so at the top of a poem. But one poet of the 9th century managed to find a secret way of signing his poems. Cinewolf hid his name in his poetry by using runes, letters that were used in Britain before our current alphabet caught on. Runic letters had names that also meant worse. Feo meant wealth in the letter F. Win meant joy in the letter W, and so on. And so Cinewolf cunningly substituted runes for select words in his poems. Put together, the rune spelled his own name. I'm not sure why he couldn't have just signed it, but then again, it wasn't that popular a practice back in the day. I wonder when people actually started signing stuff. Oh well, look it up, I suppose. But with that being said, we have reached the end of the video. I hope to see you tomorrow for day 12. And, uh, hope you have a happy Halloween, and I will see you tomorrow, hopefully. Bye!